いやハレルヤハレルヤ、アイメン、プレイズ・ローラー、ウォーゲスターデン、ビット、シェア・ザ・ページ、アイメン、アイメン、レミノ、ユキン、ヘミ、プレイズ・ザ・ローラー、ハレルヤ、ファーザー、ウィサンキュー、ガッド、ハレルヤ、ホリスピット、ユア、ウェルカム、イン、ディス、プレイス、ユア、ウェルカム、イン、ディス、プレイハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレルヤ、ハレル
to get into an argument, to bash people because they believe differently than you and they vote differently than you. We're not here to pe have people um, to, to push our beliefs on people. We're here to share with them and then let the Holy Spirit do His work. Amen? There's no, you can't Bible beat somebody. Amen? And the same thing as it is with everything else. Amen? You can't Bible beat people. You just got to just let, let the Holy Spirit move. Let God do what He's got to do. Stay in your lane. Stay on your path. You know, I see Christians doing, you know, talking about things that they shouldn't be talking about. But it lets me know where they're at. And I often say this, that if God shows you, allows you to see things, it's for one or two reasons. Either to address it or to pray for them, people. And I'm going to pray for them. Amen? I'm going to pray for them. But we're going to get started right now. The title of this message is, Are You Built to Last? Are you built to last? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to open up with 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. And let's go. What then is Apollos and what is Paul? Servants through, through whom you believe, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one, this is Paul writing. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. Verse 7. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. Verse 8. Now the one who plants and the one who waters are one, but each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 9 says, For we are God's fellow workers amen you are god's field god's building amen the word of god tells us right here here's paul was talking about you know um oftentimes we're out there and we're either planting seeds in somebody's life or we're watering seeds that somebody planted before us but nevertheless that god brings the increase god brings the growth amen we could never, um, and I often share with people because I, I get I get a lot of questions. I got to look. I get a lot of inbox messages and and people those that have my number they text me and they ask me questions about things. Amen. And I often tell people when uh, they'll address something like, "Hey, Pastor, um, blah blah blah. You know this and this is going on, and should they be doing that?" And I tell them like this. I said, "Look at everybody." is in a different place in their walk with God. Whether they're one month, two months, three months, one year, five years, ten years, everybody is in a different place and God is working on people's lives differently than our lives. Amen? So what may convict you may not convict them. And that's okay, right? As long as they're still striving to serve the Lord. And it may be in time as they grow, those things will convict them. Amen? Amen? But we can't force our convictions onto other people. Amen? We have to allow the Holy Spirit to do it. And that's the problem today. Is a lot of people are trying to force their beliefs, their convictions onto other people. If you go read Romans chapter 14, you'll understand that, hey, not everybody's in the same place. Amen? But that's not even part of my message. So I don't know why God wanted to share it. But let's get back right here. We are God's building. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. That we are the building of Christ. But are you being built to last? Amen? That's a question you got to ask yourself, man. Are you being built to last? And I pray as we get into this message that you have a deeper understanding of what this title is talking about. Are you built to last? Amen? Let's go. Have you ever seen a building after a massive fire, blackened walls, burned down uh, sections, charred remains? A fire devastates everything in its path, leaving very few things to salvage. Did you know that the Bible compares us to a building that will be tried by fire? Amen. We have the choice to either build on the foundation of Christ or build our lives on earthly desires. Amen. Build our lives. It is our choice on how we build our building. A building that we will one day have its foundation foundation tested. Amen. Because the word of God just told us right there in 1 Corinthians that, that we are God's building. Amen. That we are the building. We are the temple. We, this, this body is the temple of God. It is the building of God. At least it should be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
And um, we have a choice. Either we're going to build on the foundation of Christ or we're going to build on earthly desires. Amen? Mm, yeah, you're right. Earthly desires. It is our choice on how we build our buildings. John 16, says this, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Jesus was telling the disciples and the people that, listen, he says, these things that I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, we will have tribulation. We are going to face some things. The Greek definition of tribulation is a pressing. Pressing together, amen? Pressure. The oppression, the affliction, and the tribulation, the, the distress, and the straits, amen? We will face these things in this walk. Trials, tribulations, opposition, and so much more. Accusations, persecutions. There's so much that we're going to face in this walk. Amen. And if you don't build on the foundation of Jesus Christ, I can almost guarantee you when you start facing these things that you're going to go turn away from God because you're not building on a foundation. Amen. Some people build on feelings and emotions. I don't feel it. I know people that say, well, I've been to church, but it didn't do nothing for me. What do you mean? What was it supposed to do for you? I didn't feel nothing. Oh, you wanted to feel something. Amen? But because you went in there expecting to feel something, and you didn't feel it, you want nothing to do with God. What were you expecting? Amen? What were you expecting? We are the temple of God. Amen? But but the but Jesus says that we're gonna face tribulation and tribulation is oppressing, oppressing together, amen. The pressure. Anybody ever felt some pressure in their life, amen? Everybody ever felt like you're being squeezed and you can't be squeezed no more, amen? Like, man, how much more do you want to take out of me? How much more can I go through, amen? How strong do you think I am, God? Amen. The pressing. Amen. The pressing in and, and, and the being pressed together, amen? Anybody ever felt that or is it just me? Amen? Because we face things. And I think the biggest trial that I face in my walk, and I have faced, I've, I've faced homelessness as a pastor. I have faced so much stuff in this walk with God. The biggest trial that I faced was the murder of my son last year. And that, that trial was meant to try to take me out. But because of who I am in Christ and where I built my foundation on Jesus Christ, though it hurt and it was painful, I was able to withstand it. Amen. Because that was a pressure that was oppressing together. Amen. That was affliction that I was facing. Amen. We will face these things in our walk. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 says this. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. What the heck did you say, John? I didn't say it. James said it. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result. So that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Praise God. Amen. We're going to face opposition, man. We're going to face pressure. We're going to face hurts and pains in our lives. It's inevitable, man. It's inevitable. Amen. And I know, like I said, my biggest trial was losing my son, man. It was, it was hard. And, and I did my son's funeral myself because my kids said that's the way it needs to be. Amen. And so it was when my mom passed away. Amen. My dad told me, you got to do your mom's funeral. She wouldn't have it any other way. She said, whenever she goes, she wanted you to do her funeral. Amen. But when you stand on God and you build on the foundation of Christ and these trials and tribulations and the opposition, like Jesus said, that we're going to face tribulation, that we're going to face some hardship in this world. But when you build on Jesus Christ, you're able to stand. You're able to wither the storm. Amen. You're even when you're covered up and your head's down and you're like, man, God. Hold on to me, Lord. Don't give up on me, God. Amen. 
The word of God says, count it. Consider it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, when you encounter that pressing together, when you encounter that opposition, the oppression, to count it all joy, he says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. In other words, man, go through the fire, amen? Don't run from the fire, run to the fire and run through the fire, amen? Don't shrink back, don't back up. No, come on, sabes que, let's go. How many of you ever been in a fight by the raising of your hands right here in the comments? Ever been in a fight in this world? I've been in so many fights. How many did you back down from? I backed down from one because I was too stoned to fight and I know I would have got beat up. But let me tell you, the next day was a different story. Amen. But I backed down. I would never back down, but I was too stoned that day. And I backed down. Amen. Well, now that we got God, we shouldn't be backing down from nothing. The creator of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit is all over us, is all around us, and is all in us that we shouldn't be backing down from anything. Amen? Praise the Lord. We are trying to obtain, obtain an endurance that will be made perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. An endurance that will keep us stable in this walk. Amen? That's what we are trying to obtain. Anybody ever been chased by the cops? You ran. If you got away, you ran. You ran. You were running with all the endurance that you can run with to get away. And that's the way it's got to be with God. You're not running from it. You're running to it and you're running through it with endurance. Amen. Amen. Verse 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Amen. James, verse 3, 1 verses 3, knowing that the testing of your, pay, of your faith produces endurance. Amen. We have to be men and women that clothe ourselves in endurance so that we can keep moving forward. So, so that when things come, Amen. That it's not going to knock us down. I know some people that are facing trials right now. Amen. Just went to my cousin's funeral. On Saturday. Amen. And a cousin from that same family. Was in a motorcycle accident four weeks ago. And is paralyzed from the neck down. Amen. And I know people are facing stuff. I know people today that I'm talking with and ministering with that have lost their children. Amen? It's hard, bro. It's hard. It's hard. But nothing is impossible with God. With God on your side, you're able to endure. You're able to persevere. Amen? The title of this, this Bible study is, Are You Built to Last? Share this page. Amen? Make sure you guys share this. Are you built to last? Amen? We're going to find out right now. You see our building, our body is being built for a purpose. Amen. And we must go through these things to obtain what we need in this life. It should make us better, not bitter. It should make us better, not bitter. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 9. Peter talks right here, he says, Who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Amen? Peter says that we are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation to be revealed in the last time. Amen? In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Verse 7, So that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, 
which perishes through tested by fire, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but you believe in him. Amen. You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Verse 9, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. We are going to face trials, brothers and sisters. We are going to face persecution. We're going to face accusation, accusations. We're going to face hard times. Amen. But the Word of God says that, that we are going to be tested. He says, in verse 9, And though you have not seen Him, verse 8, And you love Him, and though you do not see Him now, but believe in Him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. People who honestly believe that once saved, you're always saved. It's, that's not true. Because in the book, in the Bible, it says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means that you've got to continually work on it. Amen. We're saved, but we've got to work on the growing. We've got to work on the enduring. We've got to work on the persevering. Amen. We've got to work on building our character in Christ. Amen. We should not be the same persons we were when we came to God a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. There's got to be some growth. There's got to be some fruit in your life. There's got to be some something that is edifying God through you. In your life, every day, there's got to be growth. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. This endurance that we obtain to overcome these trials and tribulations will help us obtain the outcome of our faith the salvation of our souls it's something we got to work on daily it's not once saved always saved Charlie we got to work on it amen there's got to be growth I've been talking about like I said I get a lot of messages and I, there's this one uh, individual that messages me and she's new in Christ and um, just to see the growth in her life it's a blessing you know she'll message me uh things that are going on things that are taking place and how she overcame it or what she did and it's just like man praise god that's the way it's got to be when the opposition comes you don't get out there and start throwing dukes throwing wantas como así no you get on your knees and you fight in prayer you fight in fasting you fight in the word of god that's how you persevere. That's how you endure. Amen. The Apostle Paul, you see our buildings, our body is being built for a purpose and we must go through these things to obtain what we need for this life. It should make us better, not bitter. Amen. The Apostle Paul gives one of the greatest motivations for pure Christian living. He says, someday we will stand before God and give an account for how we built our lives, how we built our temple. Amen. We're going to stand before God. Romans chapter 14 verses 12 says this. So that each one of us will give an account of himself to God. We're going to stand before the Lord. Amen. And, and, and our life is going to be played out. Amen. And we're going to have to give an account for why we did that or why we didn't do that. When we should have did that or why we did it. When we shouldn't have done it. You know that's why uh, discernment is very vital in our walk. Because discernment will let you know when to, when not to. What to say, what not to say. What to do, when not to do it. Amen? It, it, it's a tool. It's an instrument that we need. A gift from God, discernment. You need to pray for discernment. Amen? Amen? We need to pray for discernment in our lives so we know how to conduct ourselves. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Come on. James chapter 5 verse 11 says this. We count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings. That the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. Amen. If you've read the, bio, the book of Job, man, you see like right from the gate. 
is about to lost all his kids, not one or two, but all his kids, amen? He lost every bit of his cattle, amen? He had nothing, but his dependency was on God. He was enduring through the trials, and he was going so, so, so far that, that he started getting boils on his body, right? But that even his wife, his own wife, said, why don't you curse God and die? His homeboys were telling him, like, what's wrong with you, man? Just, just turn away from God. But Job knew, man. He had his relationship with the Lord. You see, this trial of my son's murder last year was to try to take me out. Amen. And I'll share with you that for a minute when I was in my office at work and I got that call from the coroner's office and they told me that my son had been murdered. At first, I just felt that old man begin to rise. I felt that I, and I was walking out of my office and, and my boss, the vice president was walking up like, what was it, John? It was my son, bro. He got murdered. He just looked at me and he got teary-eyed. I told him, I got to go, bro. I got to go. And I went and got in my car, put worship music on, and I began to pray and ask God, don't let this old man rise up, God. Don't let this old man, man, he's been dead for 30 years, man. Don't let him rise up. And I prayed, man, because I had to call my other son. I had to call my daughter. I had to call my dad. <laughs> Amen. But I think I passed that test. Amen. I think I passed that test. <laughs> Amen. But that's, that's why we face these things in life. And it determines on how you build your house. How you build your temple, how you build the building of God, and what you build it on is going to determine if you're going to stand or if you're going to crumble. Let's go. He says in James 5.11, he says, we count those blessed who endured. <laughs> Woo, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealing, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. You know, since my since my son passed away last March, it's been one thing after another. Boom, 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 boom. One relative after another. We we lost so many relatives last year. One thing after another. Amen. My dad was diagnosed with cancer a couple of months ago, but praise God that God is going to get the victory in that too. It's just been one thing after another. Amen. But praise God, I say, praise God. Amen? Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 12 says this, If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we endure, we will reign with Christ. But if we deny him, and how do you deny him? By shrinking back and, and backing off from the trial and the testing of your faith that has been placed before you by backing off of the cup that God has placed before you. You know that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he went to pray right before he was abducted and kidnapped and, and betrayed by Judas. And the word of the Lord says that he got on his knees and began to pray. And he told God, he says, Lord, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, but if not, not my will be done, but your will be done. He was telling God, listen, man, as I was scared, Pops, I really don't want to go through the cross and get hung on that cross, but if I have to, I will. And how many of you respond just like that? I do it all the time. If this is my cup, God, help me drink it, and you get me through it. I prayed that prayer when my son got murdered. If this is my cup, God, for me to drink, help me drink it, God. But you get me through it. And God did. The devil's a punk, man. He's a punk. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tim, Paul, Timothy says it. In Timothy, it says that if we endure, we will also reign with him. You have to endure, brothers and sisters. You have to build your house, you have to build your temple, build your building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, His Word, and through prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, some people shrink back when they encounter trials, tribulations, 
or the opposition. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, 38. Let's take a look and see what it says. Hebrews 10, 38 says, But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Mm, come on, somebody. Come on. Did you catch that? Hebrews 10, 38. <coughs> he says, but my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, he says, my soul has no pleasure in him. God has no pleasure if you shrink back. Amen. In other words, don't run from the trial. Don't run from the tribulation. Don't run from the valley. <coughs> I was sharing with somebody the other day that <coughs> we come from the streets. A lot of us come from the same background. Some worse than others. Nevertheless, we were sinners lost. Amen. And, and growing up in the streets, you know how to make things happen. So sometimes we may face trials and tribulations. And in rather and rather going through the way that God wants us to go, we shrink back. And, and, and we lean on our own understanding. And then we go out there and try to make it happen ourselves. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. The Word of God says that there's a way that seems righteous to a man, but its end is death. Amen. There's only one way to go about it, and that's go forward. Not to shrink back. Because right here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, But my righteous one will live by faith. I'm going to trust God through it all. No matter what it looks like, no matter what valley, famine, drought I'm in, no matter what fire I'm going through, amen, I'm going to trust, trust God. I'm going to trust God through it all. Amen. And he says, <laughs> And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The Greek definition of shrink is to draw back, to pull away, to let down, to lower, to withdraw of a timid person. See, people shrink back because they have fear. And they have fear because they don't have God or the Holy Spirit. Because the Word of God says in 1 Timothy, He says, He did not give us a spirit of fear, <coughs> but a sound mind. Amen? But when a person becomes afraid of a trial or tribulation that they're facing, it's because they don't have God in their life and they're not rooted in Christ. And they didn't build their foundation on Jesus Christ. Amen? Because that's what the Greek definition of shrink is, to draw back, to let down, to lower, to withdraw of a timid person. We are not people to be afraid of the trial and tribulation faced before us. Amen? We are people to endure with perseverance and just keep plowing, man. Boom, boom. Boom, one punch after another, man. I'm going to punch my way through this tribulation in prayer, in reading, in fasting, amen. We have the tools. The Word of God says that our tools are not of this world, amen. We don't fight like regular people fight. We get on our knees and we say, Lord, you go deal with them, God. I had to do that today, God. You go deal with them people, man. I'm just going to keep walking. I put it in the hands of the Lord and I'm going to keep walking, amen. You can't shrink back. Praise the Lord. Let's go. God has no pleasure in one who shrinks back. As we build our building, we are building it to last. <coughs> to endure. To overcome. And to conquer. What's the title of the message? Are you built to last? Right now, are you built to last through that trial and that tribulation that you're facing? If you're not facing trials and tribulations, you better really check your walk with God. If the enemy's not coming after you, check your walk with God. You may just be walking with the devil. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. Chapter 7, 24 through 27. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. A familiar passage of scriptures. He says, therefore, anyone, this is Jesus, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who is the rock? Jesus Christ. Come on, let's go. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed 
against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. The floods, the winds, the things that slammed against that house, the rain, are the trials and tribulations of life. When those things come, and they come in full force and they slam against you like, boom, you got hit with a ton of bricks, man. Are you going to still be standing? Is your building, which is your house, which is your temple, which is your body, which is you, are you still going to be st still be standing? Amen. Let's go. Verse 26. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell. And the word of God says, and its collapse was great. Amen. How do you respond during trials and tribulations? How have you built your house to be able to withstand the storms? Amen. To be able to withstand the rain the winds, amen, the floods, when they slam against you? Is your foundation, your house, your building still going to be standing? Or did you build it on the sand, amen, without prayer, without fasting, <coughs> without reading? And when those things came and they slammed against you and they knocked you down, the word of God says, the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell. It fell and its collapse was great. It was great. The collapse was great, meaning it was a big collapse. It was devastating because they built their house on the sand and not on Jesus Christ. They couldn't endure that because they had no solid foundation. You and I and the body of Christ are getting ready to engage. <coughs> and if you don't build your house on the foundation of Jesus Christ, you may just be one of those that's going to collapse, one of those that is going to shrink back. <coughs> and here's the thing, is it? When you're serving God, people are watching you, amen? People are watching you. When you say you're Cristiano, people are watching you, amen? They're watching your walk. And they don't care if you could do 100 things right. They don't care about that. But the minute that you do one thing wrong, you're going to have an aha moment. Like, aha, look at you. Amen? Look at you. And these people that watch you and your walk, maybe they're not saved yet, maybe they are saved, maybe they're young Christians, I don't know, and they're watching you. <clears throat> when you shrink back, when you collapse and your fall is great, you have a domino effect. You have now fallen down, knocked down other people that were watching you. They were looking to you. Not only that, but now you have a domino effect of those people that you were in, to encounter with a divine appointment. <clears throat> See, when you're walking this walk with God, there are divine appointments in your life with people that you are to meet. They've already been laid out. The Word of God says we have been predestined in the book of Ephesians. We have been predestined for this. So it's already been predetermined. It's already been predestined for you on these people that you're going to meet along the way in your walk with God. People you're to share the gospel with. People you're to share love with. If you collapse... If you shrink back, those divine appointments now, have been broken because you fell or because you shrunk back. And we will have to give, a, give an account to God for that. So now is the time, man, to get serious. And to build your house on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 9 through 15. Let's take a look at this passage of scriptures. 
For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. <clears throat> Amen. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation. Another is building on it. But each person must be careful how he builds. Check it out. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, or precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, verse 13, each one's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed by fire. He's talking about your temple. He's talking about your body. He's talking about your building. The Word of God says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. You! Say it to yourself. I am God's building, man. I am the temple of God. God's t God lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit dwelleth inside of me. Amen. You got to speak these things over yourself. Amen. I put a little prayer together the other day about the confession of favor. About speaking things over your life that God's word tells us. Amen. If you don't speak these things to your life, yourself, nobody else is going to tell you. But it's how you build your foundation. Amen. By speaking these things into your lives. And building this foundation, amen? Because in verse 13, he says, Each one's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work. Come on. God, the word of God tells us, He is going to test your foundation, man. My foundation was tested when my son was murdered. Amen. But our foundation, verse 13, each one's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work. You're going to be tested on your foundation one day. Verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built it on remains, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet, uh, yet only so as through fire. If you haven't built your foundation on Christ and you get tested, or you shrink back. And the testing proves that your foundation wasn't built on Jesus Christ. The Word of God says that you will suffer loss. That loss can be so many things, man. So many things. It could be things about you, things against you, things to you. <coughs> but it can also overflow <coughs> to your family. To your friends. Amen. To your friends and family. To your workplace. We just don't know. <coughs> so it's better to build your foundation on Jesus Christ. And when the trials and the tribulations come, because Jesus said that they're going to come. He says, in this world, you'll face tribulation. So he's already gave us a warning. We're going to face them. When these trials and tribulations come, you don't run from them. You press on. You endure through them. You persevere through them. So that when your foundation is tested by fire, you're going to stand. And the Word of God says you stand and you will receive a reward. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. As we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9-15, through 15, there will come a day of judgment for our lives. 
the building when our works will be exposed by fire. <clears throat> when we stand before God in <clears throat> his fire, <clears throat> we'll reveal the foundation of our building. Amen. Have we been building with wood, hay, and stubs? Stubble, which are perishable? <clears throat> or have we been using gold, silver, and precious stones, which are permanent? Prayer, fasting, and the Word of God. Is it your heart's desire to stand before God one day and present an enduring building built on Jesus Christ? Is that your desire? Because that's my desire. Then live your life with eternity in mind. Read and obey God's word. Witness to your friends and family. Build with things, with the things that last. Amen. Build. Build. <clears throat> the question you got to ask yourself is it? A couple of questions. How am I building? God's building. Because the Bible tells us that we are God's workmen, we are God's servants, and we are God's building. How are you building your building? How are you building God's building in your life? How are you building it? <coughs> do you shrink back when trials and tribulations come? Or do you endure? Do you persevere? Amen? I want to stand before God. And I want to say, Lord, you tested me with fire, God. So many trials and tribulations I endured. I've never shrunk back. Praise God, man. And I'm not Superman. I just knew from the gate that I wanted to serve God when I got saved. And I made a promise to the Lord when I, made, when I received Christ at that altar, November 13th, 1992. I told God like this. I said, Lord. I didn't even say Lord. I, I said it like this. I said, Sasuke, I don't know if you're real, man. But if you are, and you take me out of this drug life, because I had been in drugs since I was 11 years old. I was 30 years old now. I had been on a nine-year cocaine addiction from the time that I was 21 to the day that I got saved. And I said, if you take me out of this drugs and gang life and this alcoholic life, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And he did. I had instant deliverance that night at that altar, November 13th, 1992. 1992. A nine-year cocaine addiction was gone. And I'm telling you, I was doing a 16th to an eight ball a night, every night. For nine years. Amen. Pretty much every night. And that's what I told God. So I've kept my word to the Lord. That no matter what comes my way God. I'm going to serve you man. And the biggest trial that I faced. Was the murder of my son last year. And I'm not saying that that's the end of it. No there's still trials going on today. Stuff that I'm still facing today. The enemy is a punk man. But greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in this world. Amen. I give that wato nothing, no glory, no mention, nothing. I call him a punk. You're a punk, man. You're a punk. You've already been defeated. Amen? But it's up to you. Are you built to last? Amen? Francis Schaeffer said this. A Christian has one foundation. Jesus Christ. On that, he must build for eternity. See, you're not building for now. You're building for eternity. So that you don't shrink back. Amen. That you don't collapse. But that you stand and you persevere until you get to heaven. Until you get to heaven. That's when it stops. Amen. Francis Schaeffer said this. A Christian has one foundation, Jesus Christ. On that, he must build for eternity. Amen. Are you built to last tonight? I don't know. I know I am. And like I said, the trials and the tribulations, they ain't stopped since last year. Now they're coming, man. I'm facing, I'm facing some stuff right now. But I count it all joy. Consider it all joy, the Word of God says. 
when you face various trials. You know why? Because that means God ain't forgot about me. Because nothing can come to you and I without coming through Christ, without coming through God, without the approval of God. You take a look at Job. The Word of God says that the devil was roaming to and fro, and God asked him, where are you coming from? He said, I'm just walking and strolling. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil says, yeah, you do this to him, he'll curse you. You do that to him, he'll curse you. And God said, you could do whatever you want to him, but you can't take his life. Amen? You know why God said that? You know why he told, why he asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Because he knew that Job would not curse him. He knew that Job would not turn away from him. And when trials and tribulations come to you, then you have to understand this. That they had to get the approval of God to come to you first and to test you. And that if God believes enough in you that you're going to come out of it by allowing Satan to come against you, then you better believe enough in yourself that you are going to come out of it. That you're not going to shrink back and that you're not going to collapse. Amen. You better believe enough in yourself as much as God believes enough in you because nothing can come to you and I without getting the approval of God. Amen. He said, have you considered my servant John? Have you considered my servant Mona? Have you considered my servant Lorenzo? Have you considered my servant Lancho? Have you considered? Amen? Because God believes enough in you that you got to believe enough in yourself that you're going to come out of it. You're not going to shrink back and you're not going to collapse. Now with that, I encourage you to go out there, if you're not, to go out there and build your house on a solid foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's our message for tonight. Amen? So, <clears throat> I'm going to say a prayer, and you can repeat this prayer after me. You can say it out loud, or you don't have to say it at all. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't have to say this prayer. Amen. My prima, Pastor Alice Arminger Davis, just joined us. And we just, that's the one that I was talking about. We just had a funeral for her on her mom on Saturday. Prima, if you get a chance, listen to this message and to it's through the whole thing. Amen. The title of the message is, Are You Built to Last? And I know you guys are. But anyway, let's say this prayer. Repeat it after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight. And Lord, I ask for the forgiveness of my sins, my shortcomings, and my faults. Father, forgive me if I have not built my house your building on a solid foundation. I ask and pray from this day forward that you help me, God, to be serious and build my house, your building, my temple, your temple on a solid foundation of Jesus Christ until eternity comes, God, because we are building for eternity, God. And I don't want to be left out. I don't want to collapse. I don't want to shrink back when trials and tribulations come my way. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, God, I come before you tonight, God, and I thank you for the word that was spoken tonight, God. I ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, that you help my brothers and sisters, God. You know who's building on a solid foundation and who isn't, Father God. But I pray this evening, Father God, that they would be serious, Father God, because eternity in heaven or hell is serious, God. The devil is serious, Father God. The devil is out trying to take people out, God, and we don't want to be people that shrink back, Father God. We don't want to be people that, that, that collapse when the trials and the tribulations come, God. We want to build our house on a solid foundation, God. We want to be built to last, Father God, until eternity comes for us, Father God. Lord, I pray 
that you wrap your arms around my people, Father God, my friends, my family, Father God, those that have lost their loved ones, Father God. I pray for Mona Gutierrez right now, Father God, who lost her son, Father God, and that we are doing, Father God, their funeral, the funeral for him next week, God. I pray even now, Father God, you bring peace and comfort to those that have lost loved ones, Father God, that you saturate them from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet, Father God, that you wrap your arms around them, Father God, and that you give them strength through this time, Father God. I pray this, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that you cover your people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Share this message, man. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.